All right. So being it's a three, I will start by saying uh, it's an incredibly ambitious game. Um, I will give it that in terms of, of credit. It's kind of about where the credit ends for me. Uh, I, I don't particularly like Bayonetta 3. Uh, I finished it today and I do come away with uh, some sense of disappointment. Um, now, I did say last week that I'd never finished 2 and I don't remember why. Uh, I, I think part of it, I think I mentioned, was like one of the characters annoyed me, but I don't remember who. Um, but I still maintain that I am a, a fan of the original and... Um, I'd already been thinking about this third one because partly just because it's been in development for so long that, uh, and just because of like the release window of the last couple of weeks, there's just been a whole bunch of things that came out. But I saw that Bayonetta three was coming out, so I was like, you know what, I'm gonna play it. Why not? And again, it's a game that is incredibly ambitious. And hey, one thing you can say about platinum games in general is they tend to be very ambitious. Um, it's just like in terms of the execution, sometimes it doesn't pay off. And it doesn't pay off here partly because of the restraints of the fact that it's on the Switch, which, you know, I do kind of keep in mind that if it wasn't for Nintendo, this game would never have existed. And, and you know, Bayonetta 2 probably would have would never have existed. So on one hand, it's like, hey, I, you know, just can appreciate that this does exist because it is on Switch. But it's probably the game more than any other that really shows where we are now in terms of what the switch can and can't do um mm. because this game god bless it at many many points you would be hard pressed to distinguish whether i was playing bayonetta 3 or bayonetta 1 uh, they're they're very very similar in terms of how they look um and how they perform sometimes but you can see throughout where concessions have to be made to get this game running um for the most part fairly decently though there are times when the the game there's a lot going on where it struggles but um it's a game that just you know like playing it in in docked mode i think it's running a, i, I want to say it's like 720p it might even be under that i can't remember but there's so much going on uh but it just doesn't look particularly appealing a lot of the environments are really stripped to, to their bare bones um and for a game that's going for such a level of scale, again, the ambitions of what this game is, it just can't match that in terms of like the environments and whatnot. And um, the other part of the issue in terms of where it, it doesn't meet the ambition in the execution is just the game design. Um, because again, this is a game that really goes for, for scale. Um, and, and the way that it goes for that for the most part is that in Bayonetta 1, uh, most of the combat would take place with enemies that are of a similar size to Bayonetta. And even though she's about seven or eight feet tall, it's still, you know, kind of fairly regular combat in that regards. Um, but at the end of a lot of the, the boss fights, her outfit would turn into a giant dragon, bite the head off of the enemy, and, you know, you go about your day. They decided to take that scale of ridiculousness and kind of for about 90% of the game, it's like you've got this kind of constant out like source of like kaiju big battles where you've got enemies that are 10 times the size of you. And uh, between this and Elden Ring, I've really kind of confirmed that I don't enjoy boss fights or even enemy fights with enemies that are 10 times the size of me because they just typically end up being a bit of a clusterfuck where there isn't really any kind of rhythm or rhythm to it. And certainly not with Bayonetta 3. It's just you're hitting buttons and hoping for the best. And because the enemies are so large, uh, you know, one of the big things of, that was one of the, the kind of, um, not selling points, but one of the unique selling points of, of the original Bayonetta was the idea that um, if if you could telegraph when any, an enemy was about, attacked, about to attack, you could uh, dodge at the last second and go into witch time, which would slow everything down for a few seconds and allow you to get in a bunch of hits. But because the enemies were the same size of you and the way that they telegraphed was a little bit more obvious, um, you it didn't feel like you was just spamming the um, the dodge button in a, where in a way with Bayonetta 3, because everything is so massive and half the time you're underneath the fucking belly of whatever monster, which means that the game like will sort of opaque out that enemy so you can see yourself. You have no idea of like when an attack is actually happening because the enemy itself takes up most of the screen as well. So you just, you know, hit, do a couple of hits 
and then hit the the parry button and, and hope for the best and it just it becomes a bit mindless and a bit um just very spammy in a way that, that original doesn't feel and uh yeah like i mean the the story it's it's going for a multiverse of madness thing um and there's a new character introduced who i do not care for and like hey you don't really go into bayonet games for the plot but even by like the standards of this it's some wacky anime bullshit uh that i kind of lost sense of what the fuck was going on about 15 minutes in um and the never the, the story never kind of drew me back in and uh yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of this game. And I got to the point where... Because one of the things it tries to do as well is, like, you you have a, a, a critical path that you're following, but you can have little kind of offshoots where you can go to this path over here to the left and you'll find, like, a kind of secret battle area, which you don't want to do because the combat isn't particularly enjoyable, so you end up skipping most of those. But... Again, because like the environments are not particularly well designed or they're they're really stripped down to their core, they're not they're not particularly enjoyable to to explore because and again, like Bayonetta, it's a hack and slash type of game. It's not a platforming game, it's not a game really about exploration, so none of that is particularly enjoyable anyway. Um so you've got all that going on, you've got NPCs that look like they've come out of Sonic 06, you've just just got all these things going on, and it's just like there probably is like what would have been a good game in here, but through some questionable game design and just a lot of like, you know, the, the open world areas in this game make fucking Pokemon Legends look like Elden Ring. They're, they're so barren and just not particularly appealing to look at. And uh, yeah, I I didn't enjoy this game. So um, I know you've played a bunch of it, Garrett. Uh, I feel like you're not quite to the degree that I am with this, but, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I played about me. four chapters, I think at the moment. So I was like, uh, dipping my toe in so far. I, I'm having a great time with this. <laughs> like, Cause you're like, these kaiju things are terrible. And I'm like, no, you make the big dinosaur go poof out of nowhere. And then it beats the shit out of things. And I'm like, yeah, thumbs up. Good video game. And then you end up like spider manning through a, a level on the back of your spider kaiju uh, as things explode around you. And then you go into like a full on actual kaiju fight. I like I've never played another Bayonetta. And as I said, I'm only four chapters into this. But I don't know. I'm having fun with it. I think it's big and dumb and stupid. I, there, there is a degree that you can switch your brain off. And again, you know, the, the spectacle. There's there are so much when spectacle. It does. I love it. I love the spectacle, like, though. So there's like f the, these these chaos gears that you have to collect. And so uh, the, for each one of them, there's like a kind of big like end finale boss where one of your... Because throughout the game that you collect different weapons and you also collect different like kaiju monsters that uh, like help you in battle and as... Garrett mentioned you hit the the left trigger and just they fucking pop out of nowhere for a brief period of time and you can use them in combat as well um but for each of like the big battles it turns into kind of more of like a, of a gimmicky fight where with the the first one it again it's basically like a godzilla fight but for the next one you're kind of like giant demon butterfly she's basically having like a bubble bath in the sky with the clouds and you're firing <laughs> bubbles at these enemies that are coming towards you and you trap them in the bubbles and then you swipe them away that sounds sensational might i say <laughs> i i did enjoy that and those like particular moments there i was like all right you know, I get this, I can work with this, but everything that happens in between, which is like the core gameplay, while there is that element of you can just kind of switch your brain off and go with it, I don't know, I, feel, I don't know whether it's like Elden Ring has broken me and that I'm on board with like the deliberate combat now, I'm not sure. But yeah, Bayonetta is just, just a game where you bash that, buttons and then she does magical kicks and then even explosions come out of her and everything dies. Yeah, I just, I feel like that and, you know, the, the the bits you mentioned there about when you're doing the whole kind of Spider-Man section, there's a lot of it that I feels like I'm on a roller coaster and nothing I do here actually is that important. Like, the roller coaster is just going to happen anyway. And it's not what I wanted. I wanted to mm. kind of feel like I was a little bit more in control of this. There is a bit at the end that... You might not, Garrett, because if you haven't played another Barrett Bayonet game before, like there are elements of this story that are just going to go over your head and they fucking went over my head and I more or less know the story of Bayonetta. But there is a bit towards the end that does a thing that 
very much like another sort of multiverse film not not multiverse but before that it does a thing it's very cool i did like it um the ending uh, it kind of ties everything up and you know hopefully we don't get another one of these um but it just <sighs> i don't know I, I i didn't come into this with any expectations um which probably was the best thing to do but even without that uh i would probably have this as, as one of my kind of bigger disappointments of the year so. Dragon go boom. 